Hi, this is Sherry Ray. I'm a coach and consultant, and I support my clients in having an easier and more enjoyable experience of life. Today's conversation is on separate realities. They really don't see it the same as you. Nothing personal. I wanted to have this conversation today because I believe it, understanding separate realities is one of the most helpful truths to understand to support connection between between people. This information will make all relationships in your life easier, more meaningful, and definitely more productive. What I wanted to kind of start out with is what it looks like is that we have vision that we see the world with. We have our physical vision, but we what we don't realize is that while we all might be looking at a green tennis ball, Physically, it's a green tennis ball. I want you to to understand that um, the 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 thinking behind that tennis ball is creating your perception and your experience of the tennis ball. Okay. Now, a tennis ball, while it's completely neutral, it's a tennis ball in the world. When it comes to us individually, we're all going to have our own set of thinking and experiences with that tennis ball. But it looks like from the outside that we're all looking at the same thing from inside us. And we are looking at the same thing, but we're not experiencing it the same way. So I was thinking about if you pictured yourself around a conference table in a professional setting or at your own, <laughs> this is what, this one's loaded, a uh, uh, Christmas dinner at your own, <laughs> at your own family <laughs> setting. <laughs> and to notice that there's so much shared history at a family setting, but do you find it interesting or irritating when people can't see what you're seeing you know you're describing a specific experience that maybe several people were in the room with you at the time that it happened some people remember it some people don't remember it some people didn't see it at all the way that you saw it but you were all a witness to the same event. So the, the part of that is to start to understand that every human being, every human being is seeing the world through their unique lenses of life. And the lenses of their life are gonna be, yes, they see it physically with the mechanics we've been given, but also they're gonna see it from their own experience of life, from what they've made up about life, from, from everything that they believe they know about life and how life operates. And what is so helpful to see is that is absolutely unique to every single person. Absolutely unique. So if you, if you consider, it's like, is there anyone on the planet that has walk every step in your life with you inside your shoes with you no one there may have been somebody in the room but no one's been in your body in your shoes in every situation in life so it's it's helpful to really look at that because so they can't carry the exact same experience perception or even knowledge of the event they can't it's innocent they can't but oftentimes because our own experience is so true for us our mind tends to set it up that it's true about life it's true about it's as true for everyone as it is for me Now, I hear this a lot in um, 
with executive coaching. I hear this a lot. And one of the catchphrases in that, that setting is like, no, it's common sense. Mm -hmm. It's common sense. And it's like, no, it's common sense to you. But what's helpful to see is that your common sense is common to you, but someone else's common sense is common to them. Common sense is not universal. We all carry an intelligence, but what makes sense to, to one person is not going to make sense to the next person in the same way. You know, like I'll, I'll hear this so often, again, like in, in executive coaching settings, and it's like, well, it's common sense. You should have your, um, um, you should be super responsive and respond to an email as soon as you get it. They're like, oh, okay. Another executive goes, well, I don't care. If my, I'll answer my emails when I get a chance. It's from the leadership position. It's like, I don't care. And it's like their common sense is like, well, get to it when you get to it. Don't stress over it. The other, other people are like, no. It's almost like um, common sense might be, it's even softer than etiquette. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Where you feel like etiquette is rules of engagement. That is because Emily Post put them out there. That's the right way to do it. But common sense is kind of held in the same way, except common sense is unique to you. In your reality, common sense is your reality. Common sense is common to you. Common sense is how you see it. And it, and it's so natural that you really can't imagine somebody seeing it through different lenses. So does anybody have like an example just comes to the top of your mind, something that feels so natural, so common as common sense that you really can't believe it's not a part of everyone's reality. Kind of like the email example, you know, you should, you should respond immediately. It's like, well, that, that's common to you, but maybe not common to, to everyone. Gina. Oh, I was just going to ask, like, I guess common sense can be like, you can kind of inherit common sense, like common sense. Exactly. Exactly. Like I mean, a whole family could believe one way and then one person gets married and then the common senses don't match. <laughs> that's, that's a perfect example of separate realities. It's like when two, two people come together, whether it's to uh, in a work setting or a romantic setting or, or even friends, it's like it's so helpful to see that those two people coming together have got their own collection of common sense. Mm -hmm. And, and to your point, you're born into a family structure. And when you're born into a family structure, it's great to see that that family structure has its own kind of beliefs and governing systems and rights and wrongs, goods and bad do's and don'ts. And that we're kind of dropped into that and then we're raised in it. So of course it looks like that's the way life is and that's the way it's done but it's it's it that's the way it's done inside the reality that you kind of been conditioned and raised into but not everybody mm -hmm. was raised in the same condition mm -mm. no no that's a great point and that's a great point it's like this was so evident to me when i i um I'm the youngest of four kids in five and a half years with the same parents in the same house and the same everything in a five and a half years. So it's not like uh, a 20 year span, but in five and a half years, there were four kids. And it was fascinating to me how each one of us had our unique memories, our unique experiences of our parents, our unique um, are really our unique realities of, of the household. And I, before I understood all this, I would just scratch my head going, 
how could it be so different? How could it be so different? Because we're all in the same pot of soup. But each person's thinking generates judgments, ideas, goods, bads, whatever, and creates their perception of the events. And that is the, the place where their reality gets created. It's where their emotions get informed. It's from their perception. So that's absolutely right, Gina. It's like we're kind of dropped into these, these systems. And then it really looks like it's universal for every human being. But it's really just, we can, we can really start to have more curiosity about the people around us when we understand that everything we're, all of our perceptions are unique to me and how I'm seeing them. Because you know what well, I've been. Oh, great. Please. Oh, I was going to say, um, I've been doing this writing class online and they, they give a picture and everybody writes something. Well, last night there was 99 people in it. And she said it was almost 99 different stories. Exactly. Of what they saw in the photograph. Uh, exactly. Exactly. So that's like the, the part where I think it's so important to understand this is when we're trying to share who we are or to have a conversation or to resolve a situation and we're talking and people aren't getting us, air quotes, getting us, or they... Are they curling their nose at whatever it is we're talking about? And we think, we either think, I mean, maybe I need to improve my language. Maybe I need to <laughs> speak more clearly, more slowly, more loudly. It's kind of like, um, you're not going to understand Korean by yelling any louder. You know, it's like, if you don't speak Korean, you don't speak Korean. So give yourself a chance to um, not just, raise the volume but when you're when you're speaking and people don't get you oftentimes we get our feelings hurt mm -hmm. we think they're stubborn we think they're just not trying to get along we think they're argumentative we think they're um they don't care because we all think we're if, if we're english speaking people we're thinking my goodness i'm using words from the dictionary we can look them up how come they're not getting what I'm saying? Well, everything that you're saying, or, you know, a lot of things that you're saying that they see it in their unique way. If you can to learn that they are taking in what you've said through their very conditioned mind and they're attaching it to that, what they know to be true not what you know to be true because they don't know your experience and you don't know their experience. So it can, it helps to take the personal out of it because people are, are, you know, listening through a busy mind, meaning they're, if a bit, I'll say, how does a mind get busy? It's like, for instance, here comes the boss walks in and stands across your desk not looking happy for a lot of people their mind gets real active you know for a lot of people when somebody walks in and says oh we need to talk <laughs> their, their mind gets really busy really busy so uh while they may just one person may be wanting to talk about a, a, a project or a strategical strategy change in something someone else's bells and whistles are going off and a they can't hear they don't want to hear their their mind has gotten so active and as you the speaker you may think they're not listening they don't care you know what's their problem they don't like me you know your mind gets as active as their mind has gotten active but it's not about you it's really about their own reaction to what's going on inside their head. Their set of 
concerns, their set of perceptions. Lisa. I mean, from that, I can really kind of see how, you know, when you say like, you know, when someone comes in and the boss comes in the room and the mind starts to get really, really busy and maybe kind of already on guard, you know, um, that, you know, in a way, if you think about it that way, that, you know, that, that everybody has their own perception that you don't even know what's going through that person's mind yet, that it's not really worth getting worked up about it yet because <laughs> you don't you don't even know what they're coming you know you don't even know yes. what's going on inside them right and and it's you you have no idea and so yeah yeah so it's worth finding out first um you know before reacting um as best you can and as best you can. And, and if you think about too, the innocence of human beings, if you think about love relationships, I mean, that's a loaded topic. Everybody comes into a love relationship with their own set of ideals and ideas and, um, yeah, no, whatever the Jerry Maguire, you complete me to who knows what, you know, love relationships are really one of those places where we have a lot of thinking on it we have a whole lot of thinking on it and we don't know we do we think that's a love relationship you know how i'm holding it and everybody is carrying the same uh operating system the same what it means the roles we play in love relationships we all think it's we're operating from the same exact model but we're not, we're, we're really operating from what makes sense to us. What makes sense to us? And I think a, a, a visual about it that's helpful is, yes, people sitting around a table and seeing that every single one of those people around a table is a, a complete and total universe and they are the center of their universe. Their entire perception of the world is how they're seeing it in that moment. Innocently, innocently, but how they're seeing it in that moment. So the idea, if the more you can kind of relax into that, and the more you can relax into the idea that their reaction to what you're sharing is not personal to you, but it's absolutely related to how their mind is setting it up. Typically, you can stay in the conversation and, and get to a place of curiosity about how are they seeing it and what's going on with them to get a place of understanding and then and that's when you're kind of on the same side of the line in a place of wanting to understand where they are, the conversation can evolve. A lot of times, if once we take it personal, a conversation stops. And you might have that same conversation for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You know? <laughs> or it just you may just walk away and never have that conversation again because you're exhausted. You're like, I can't. Cindy, what's your question? Well, actually, you just um, kind of said what I was going to say <laughs> in that I have to know when I'm being triggered into because my when I get reactive about something that maybe somebody has said or a conversation topic um, or a surprise. Um, I've had to, it's taken me a long time in my life to learn that my reaction is shut down, you know, um, and I have to know what that feels like in me. And if I, if I don't want to do that, um, then I know, have to know how to, how to, how to get myself to, to breathe and come back. Um, 
so that I can do what you just said, which is to, to be, to be able to say, and I've kind of trained myself, even when I'm still sort of torqued by something to be able to say, help me understand, you know, help me understand what it is that you're saying or, you know, or say more, can you say more about that? Um, and that oftentimes, I think what I, I think what I've experienced is that usually opens up the other person a little bit, perhaps, um, because it, even if I'm not, even if I'm still kind of in a reactive place, it makes me sound curious, <laughs> um, you know, and so I can buy myself a little bit of time to kind of, you know, again, get, get, bring myself back to a grounded place. Um, Cause like you said, if I'm reacting, if I've got busy mind, um, if I'm in a defended place, uh, that's, you know, that's not going to help the conversation. Um, but I have to, I, I have to practice those things because yeah, otherwise I, you know, um, yeah, I've had to I've had to do a lot of work to try and um, get myself to a place where I can interact if I'm if I'm a little scared. Mm-hmm. Um, and and again, knowing that scared makes parts of my brain shut down. <laughs> that's you know that's not a that's not a great place to operate from. And same thing with other people. If somebody else feels intimidated by me. Or, you know, because I've had that told to me over the years when I was a boss, you know, that people were intimidated. And I'm like, what are you talking about? But the truth is, if they are intimidated, that's not good. They are probably not hearing me. They're not able to execute Mm. what I think needs to happen. Um, So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cindy. And I think the, the another place it's like when we do, we're going to get, we're going to get bumped, you know, we're going to get, get upset or destabilized or triggered or whatever you want to call the word. But the place to really is gaining awareness that the, what's happened is <laughs> you're either, you, we don't realize we have the option to not believe what our mind is serving up when we get upset. We don't really see that, 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 The truth is, I don't have to believe what I'm thinking in this moment. That when I when I get upset, the quality of thought that comes into my head is pretty bottom feeder survival type thinking. And that the the option is to see it for what it is, a passing thought versus a reality that is taking me from the conversation. Because then at that moment in the conversation is two people having, a, uh, it, you know, exchanging words of being present to each other. Imminent danger is not happening because if the imminent danger was happening, you wouldn't have time to talk about it. Y'all both <laughs> be scattered. Do you see what I mean? You'd be calling 911 or something like that. You wouldn't have time to think about it. So in those moments when we get activated, I'll use the word activated is, is that the real leverage is in realizing that what comes to mind to me when I'm activated is thought. And I have, I can have a different relationship with what comes into my head when I get scared. It's not really informing me of anything other than what I, uh, a, a perception or what I hold to be true. That that's it. It's just kind of a, 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 a the awareness that you have the option not to listen to it. And that's a real fresh, fresh feeling to go through a place when you're triggered or upset and you really take, you have the awareness that, you know, I'll, I'll like the awareness that, or the thought that, I got to get out of here. Where's the exit sign? I know I used to live that way. I wouldn't go anywhere where I didn't know where the exit sign was. I had a credit card or I had car keys. You know, I was going to know how to go if, if I needed to go. 
<laughs> we just like, damn, boy, that was a that was a, a fearful place to live, you know. It's like no, because my mind would I believed all the thinking that I needed to be at the ready, at the ready, and and I would live in that state of at the ready, and it's like wow, that you wonder why you're exhausted, why you're overwhelmed, you're spent. My mind is active, always trying to mitigate um, bad situation. So my mind would set it up that every moment is a potential for a bad situation. It kind of exhausts me even to recant that because <laughs> that's a lot of busy mind going on that the world's not a safe place and you got to always be on guard and people aren't safe. And hopefully you start to, to see, I was so grateful that I started to see that that was how my mind was setting it up. Because in this moment, any potential threat was not in the room with me unless I brought it into the room or brought it into the conversation. But that was from my separate reality. From my collection of experiences and perceptions about life and how it works. So in those places of, of having the awareness that we can look away from the story we can look away from what's coming to mind and and connect with what's happening right here and right now. Maybe even like I'm thinking about in the and uh you hear this too. It's like you're in a work setting, but somebody comes in, your new supervisor reminds you of your ex. It's like, oh my gosh, that poor person doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is playing so hard on that person that you can't they you can see them in the hallway your mind gets active you can't hear you can't get together to move a project down the field you don't want anything to do with them and we think it's about that person not about what's going on in your mind about that person We don't really see it's all coming from inside me. There's nothing coming toward you. It's all happening from inside yourself. In your separate reality, to bring it back to separate realities, it's like we can, we all have one. We all live within a construct of a separate reality. Anything come to mind that would be, I love the examples you're sharing. Janet. Wow, Cindy, you knocked me out because, you know, I was almost going to talk, you know, say, yeah, I kind of know what you mean. And then you articulated exactly what I was thinking, but a completely different way, which I love the help you gave there about like, you know, what you say. I love that. I'm like, wrote it down and I will be saying that the next time. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> okay. Um, because it's really, and this is so, it's sort of embarrassing at 64, but just realizing recently, and my mom's been dead for two years, bless her heart. And really I do that. I have actively avoided situations where anybody might get furious with me or yell, you know, act out uh, and have thought, you know, and have kind of avoided relationships where that might happen. In other words, like, you know, it's actually affected where I want to go and how much I want to be around other people. If there's a possibility that people could fetch loose, as we used to say at our house and uh, and I appreciate what you had to say too, Sherry, about how you went into every situation kind of literally, I mean, I've done that for years, you know, keys in hand, you know, even in lunches with my mom in case I needed to run, I did never do it, but I was ready, you know. Uh, but what I, I love about it is, is that what recently happened to me, probably thanks to all these good conversations, was that uh, I activated my husband. He fussed fiercely and I did what I've always done but for the first time I realized it you use the word Cindy shut down I literally just go into stunned shock when somebody yells at me 
and my and but that's better terminology my brain just shuts off and i've had various reactions over the decades whether it was to remove myself and weep or to go you know I just had various reactions that were all very different over the years they go on for 15 or 20 years but different tactics for coping but for the first time i realized ah you know you're doing what you did at 8 years old and you can't hear you can't think you are shut down and i just i just you know recently journaled but thank you for adding to it that i can you know that that is all about me and it keeps me completely from ever looking beyond my frozen circumstance and seeing oh what why are they doing this because boy you know i've done something that really set them off and this is a you know i don't understand it i don't know what i did but you know i was i wasn't able to be curious because i was too bad uh, too deer in the headlights yes you know when you're deer in the headlights you you you're not thinking oh what is going on Well, wow, how did I cross that line? You know, what happened there? Why are they yelling? Because, you know, it takes a little bit to get most people to yell, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, when you suddenly realize, oh, uh, he is afraid of being seen as incompetent by the third person in this business thing or whatever, you suddenly start realizing this is not about you, or at least I have. That often I may have triggered it. It's about me that way but that it's really not, the reaction is not, it's because that person has got some own expect, their expectations of their own. They're well, in their separate reality, in their, in their separate reality, you could say tomato and that could light them up. You see, so I want you to see that their reaction is 100% generated from their perceptions about the word tomato. Okay, so I say that because too often, somehow we're taught to walk on eggshells or don't say the wrong thing or, you know, and it's like, that's not a relaxed state of being, you know, it's like what somebody has a reaction to is, can I be curious about that? Knowing that it doesn't have anything to do with me in the sense of, I didn't do anything to them, but something I've said has, has generated certain perceptions and thinkings within them and that's what lit them up. That's what lit them up. So it's like when you understand that truth, that their, their reaction is, is solely based on their perceptions of what they think you said, blah, blah, blah. And why it looks like, and it does feel like sometimes you're, the crosshairs are on you, you know, the target is on your forehead. It's really what's going on inside their head about what's happening in that moment. That's why the, the idea of really going, wait a minute, they're reactive. Everything that they're seeing at this moment, everything they're seeing is being generated by their thinking about their, what's getting stirred up. I just happen to be the one that's, that's sitting across from them. But that way, knowing that, that you can stay relaxed. And when you stay relaxed, you have higher quality thinking. When you're relaxed, the solutions that come to you are a much higher quality than a survival or knee jerk or, you know, I hate your guts or whatever. They, you know, <laughs> flee, flee, danger, danger. You know, it's like, no, 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 no. And that's a place where you can, you can start to generate a grounded centeredness inside you when you understand how human beings operate that we all have a separate reality and it all seems to be unique to the person, we can, it's easier to be curious than assuming that they should get me. They should, assuming they know what I'm talking about. You can stay curious and you can stay curious about what, what are, and then I, I like the idea too, to me, Jenna, what makes it so much easier than assuming where they're coming from is when you stay curious, you just ask them, you know, like, tell me what's going on in your head right now. I'd love to know what's going on in your head. Very different than, than run. 
<laughs> you know, or shutting down. It's like, cause, cause you don't know what's going on in their head. And so I really invite you not to make assumptions or analyze or interpret, just stay in the conversation, ask them directly. Don't, don't get any thinking on it. Don't believe you're thinking on it. Wait till it comes out of their mouth and you fully understand what they, what they're seeing and what they're feeling. Yes, ma'am. Accept that. Yeah, I got you. But when the temperature is high enough, um, mm -hmm. I often think, because I've tried this a little bit now, that when you do that, if the other person is activated enough, it's just like what you can expect with yourself, just as you can't hear when you're activated sometimes. Yep. And you said, don't believe what your mind is telling you on my side. Mm -hmm. I often hear coming out when somebody's activated, if they're really angry, stuff that they don't really believe either. Their, their mind is making up stuff that's not true. That sort of, I don't know, maybe it's a de defending their upsetness, you know, and they're just freestyling about where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. But it's not actually true. And the reason I know I'm right is because I've been told later, you know, I really don't believe all that. Well, the part two is like, if, if when you get upset, your quality of thinking drops, it, that is- And there's dust too uh, Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But I thought about this the other day with a client and they said, well, that old, I don't know if this is universal, which I always heard that, oh, in relationships, never go to bed mad. And I'm like, do, you know, wait until you've resolved it before you go to sleep. I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Everybody needs a good nap. Go take a nap, reset, and come back fresh. You know, don't flog it out. You're going to be flogging it out at a real low level of <laughs> a real low level of functionality. So, yes, everybody take a break. Once the, the conversation gets to a place of non productive, just like you said, you know, you're offline, they're offline. I love that. I, I even kind of like saying that going, you know what? I'm going to pause this conversation because I've lost my right mind. I'll come back and find you. <laughs> I love that. I love I, too, I've lost my right mind because I know when I'm in my right mind, I'm collaborative. I care. You know, I'm interested in where they are. And when all that shuts down because I'm upset, I'm like, oh, I've lost my right mind. I'll be back. I'll find you. Is, you know, is that cool with you? Because, you know, once, it, once the, the, the separate realities have clashed and it's not productive, there's no quality fruit will fall from that tree. We're all, I, I love the universal nature that we all operate in that same way. When we get upset or triggered or fearful, fearful, insecure, destabilized, whatever word you want to use, you're your quality of thinking drops. If I do it, everybody does it at that level. You know what I mean? All human beings operate the same way. Until really you start to, to have a healthier relationship with what your mind is barking up when you're upset and you relax, you lean back into the chair and go, oh yeah, I really can't believe what, I, what my mind tells me when I feel, when I have this feeling in my body and you know, when I feel this scared or feel this, I don't need, mm -mm. and then you kind of move right on along. You don't take debate. So Cindy, did, did you have your hand up? I did. Oh, great. Thank you, Jill. I didn't see. I'll come back and get, I'm not sure what no, the top. No, Cindy needs to go first. That's fine. No, please go right ahead. And then I'll go to Cindy next. Okay. I've often wondered why we use the word triggered. Is it because we want to kill somebody? I mean, really, <laughs> I'm being triggered. So get out your gun. And I have found that if you are defensive and you have your dukes up, then it stays in the problem. You never get to the solution. And I've also come to realize that when someone is yelling at me, or saying nasty things, their intent is not to do harm to me. It's trying to get their perception saying, when you do this, this is how it makes me feel. 
So I like what everybody has said, you know, take that pause and say, let me think this through and then we'll talk later. That really works for me. Uh, but just recently, I've wondered why they call it triggered. <laughs> I, I think what you said too, Jill, I always like this, like when the, the, the truth about uh, when people say, oh, you made me feel secure. I mean, you made me feel scared or you made uh -huh. me feel something. I'm like, can't do it. Can't do it. Your perceptions generated that feeling in you. Your thinking right. generated that feeling in you. I can't. I always liked it because it's like, you know, you can't make me like sauerkraut. Right. Yeah. That's just, I'm, I'm nothing against sauerkraut, but I'm saying you can't make me like sauerkraut. So you can't make me feel something. Mm -hmm. you, you have to really take ownership that any, any feeling that's that you're experiencing is a product of, of your thinking. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. But that is a, yeah, I don't, that, that triggered is a, I think too, it's like some of that, some of those, the phrasing we've just kind of adapted really makes it look like something from outside of us is doing something to us mm -hmm. when it's completely the opposite. Something is happening outside of us. Mm -hmm. but my experience, my experience is a hundred percent created inside me. Mm -hmm. There's nothing coming at me. Right. Anything I'm seeing is a product of my own separate reality. And they usually don't do those things to specifically harm us or to do harm to us. They're just talking about their reality, about exactly. what's going on in their inner garden. Exactly. So I really learned to forgive people have done some pretty crappy things. Uh, as I see it differently. Good point. Good point. And, and when we talk about even uh, uh, staying curious, if we realize that when people are speaking and we're not taking it personally, because we really know that when they're speaking, they're voicing their thoughts. Right. All right. Now, if somebody is voicing their thought that says, um, you're impossible or blah, 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 who knows, whatever they're speaking. It's like, if you can stay in a place of curiosity, you can really listen to what they're thinking is telling them right. in their separate reality. It doesn't have anything to do with me. It really helps you to think that they're giving voice to their thinking. Right. Gina, did you have your hand up? I did, but it's kind of irrelevant because now, now I understand what you're talking about. But I, you were talking about fear and I got to think about when I go to the hospital and how I've been doing this thing, how I used to get so worked up and going, oh my gosh, the, the blood draw is going to be bad or I'm going to pass out again or whatever. And then I started doing this thing where I was like, those people aren't there trying to hurt me, <laughs> you know? And so, yes. so I started doing this thing and I didn't even know it had a name until just a couple of days ago, but it was like reversal of desire to where I tell myself that I can catch up with the girls at the hospital and, you know, and actually tell myself I'm going to like it and I'm going to have a good time. And it's really worked. And that's a, that's a, uh, really what I love of what you said too, Jean is like a new thought came in, a fresh mm -hmm. thought came in that bring, that is offering you a totally different experience. And that's something we universally share mm -hmm. too, that we have the capacity for it, fresh thinking. Yeah. Cause it's kind of like, two realities only the other reality I mean I'm one reality and then the other one is kind of like this invisible thing that I imagine is out to get me or hurt me <laughs> no totally totally it's it's uh, that that Gina is so that's so true it's like we have a thought created reality in our head but our body is sitting in another reality 
Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? It's like, because how many times do you, you, you wake up from a, a nightmare even, or a scary dream, you wake up from a nightmare that was so real, but the reality is you're safe and comfy in a nice warm bed. Mm -hmm. But we do that with our waking life, just like we do. Um, we will find ourselves in this whole reality that's that's a creation of my thinking, projecting into the future how a, how a situation mm -hmm. is going to go. And it's like, but we that's where it's like once we really have a different relationship with what our mind is serving up, knowing we have the option to um, respect it or look away from it then there's space where for a fresh thought to come in, which occurred to you about, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's mm -hmm. an opportunity for a different experience going into the medical situations that you, you've faced. Mm -hmm. There's always in every human being, the opportunity and the, the potential for a fresh thought, which can change your experience and change your reality dramatically mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that lisa yeah uh, this is a really good conversation um i i was thinking about uh, it would be good if the spouses were in this conversation <laughs> be good if it, it'll be on do. youtube if you just happen to want to play it while you're cooking you know yeah that's a good idea <laughs> that's a good idea and that's funny. I was also thinking about, um, you know, it seems like if everybody's perceptions are different, it's almost like thinking is like almost an illusion. You know, it's like it's like there's no real, you know, we have to actually work at common ground like and, you know, it doesn't just come automatically. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. And so it's almost like like for me, it's like I've, I've heard this from you before. So I've been I'm paying attention to it, you know, over some time. And I feel as though like when people bring up, oh, uh, I don't know, um, you know, um, contentious um, opinions or, um, you know, anything of that nature, I'm really kind of like, so what? <laughs> I used to get upset, um, you know, and now I really don't feel like there's any reason to because and, um, you know, I'm kind of like, it, it almost seems unreal. Um, but, um, but um, you know, there's times I start to, of course, you know, because I still have the same kind of habits of thinking and reacting, like, you know, like Cindy said, and other people said, and yet, it doesn't last long anymore, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's a really... Uh, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely place to be. I don't even take my own opinions that seriously anymore. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> I don't either. I, I love that option. I, I, it just, just a couple of days ago, my mind got real busy on something. I was like, you know, you really don't even have to think about that. And I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I don't, it's not even happening. I don't have to think about that. And that was, that immediately calmed down and things are much easier when it's like, oh, I don't need to have my mind on that. Ah, who knew? You know, but there's a, that, that part about what you're saying, Lisa, about once you really kind of see it for the way that you're, you're seeing it, you have the option of not taking it personally. You really understand it has nothing to do about you. And so it's much easier. It's a much smoother ride. It gets so much easier. Susan. <clears throat> Good morning. Again. Good morning. Hey. <laughs> Everyone. This is great. I love keeping up with everybody too. In this Me too. I love it. Right. Yes. <laughs> so I've had an interesting experience in the last couple of years. About two years ago, um, I decided that because the relationship with my co first cousins had been cold for years. I mean, we just didn't, and I was always apologizing. That's what my mind would do. Like I would want to have a relationship with this one first cousin who's four months younger than I am, but she, I don't know what she was doing, but all I could do is walk up to her, start crying and apologize. I mean, it was weird. And that was all coming out of my own head. She hadn't done anything other than what she had done in the past. 
So finally, about two years ago, around, around the holidays, I guess, I thought, this is crazy. You know, people are going to start dying. We're of a certain age. And what am I going to do then? I mean, I did it out of self-preservation because I knew I would want to connect with her, but I wasn't, I couldn't because I didn't have a relationship with her, sort of, or the one I had was, okay. So I decided to call all my first cousins. There are about six of them. And <clears throat> just to reconnect. So I did that. And, you know, that the relationships, well, I don't know what changed. It changed in me. That's all I know. Okay, so now I do have a relationship with this one cousin where we're such so close in, in age. And what I realize every time I talk to her is there's no reason to talk about the past. Before, I had always wanted to clear up the past. And I gave that up. I said, if, if you're going to do this, you, cannot you can't live in the past. You're going to have to do it right here in the present. And it's been amazing. So, you know, I, I just, it's been amazing in that I haven't had to apologize for anything. You know, and she doesn't seem to feel the need to apologize. But every once in a while, she'll bring up something. But even she has said, I mean, here we are, 70, almost 76 years old. And it's like, we don't have to do that. We don't well, have to beautiful. do that. Yeah. So that's been, that was a really a huge learning curve for me and a, an incredible opportunity to, to stop all that chatter. So now I don't have to have all that going on before I call her. No, I just call her to see how she is. Mm -hmm. Does she call me? Most of the time, not. Does that mean anything? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a chart on the wall that I check it off of who calls when. You know? I know, but there's a part of it that's over there that wants to keep score. You know what Absolutely. I mean? But it's like that thinking man that wants to keep score about, and but it's like, I don't want to base my life in that. No. That is not the place I want to base my life. Mm -mm. I love that, Susan, because if I don't bring my thinking into this moment, it's clean. Yes. You know, if I don't bring up every, every miss, my, what I believe, my interpretation of their misdoings. So, and I, I, that we were talking a minute ago, it's like, wait a minute, I can have a relationship with these people in my mind, or I could meet them with a clean slate. Right. <laughs> I can see them for who they are today, but we freeze these situations in our mind and carry them thinking I've got to clean that up before I can be in. It's like, you don't know. I love yeah. what you're sharing. It's like, what if we, what if you came to someone just in a clean slate and a place of right. curiosity and you, you take, you take responsibility for your own thinking. Yeah. Well, and it's what you said in the, the thing we did the last time that the, that little workshop we did when you said how much the question was, how much real estate are you giving up to whatever it is you're giving it up to? And I used to give up a hell of a lot of real estate to that. And now I don't have to do that. Absolutely. When we free that, I love that when we free that real estate, it's like there's space for inspiration. Yes. But if yes. everything is taken up, there's no space for inspiration. Or even space for nothing. That's a space nice for one nothing. too. <laughs> that's, a, that's true. Like doesn't, that everybody like, well. doesn't everybody like vacation mind where they go, oh, I can take a break from my life. It's like, yeah, you can do that at any moment. You can take a break from your thinking at any moment yes. and, and yes. go to what you can call it vacation mind anytime you want. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Uh -huh. It transforms relationships, yes. you know, because when you, if you're not the same person with dragging your thinking into the conversation that you'll meet at a different place, mm -hmm. maybe you'll want to continue. Maybe you won't, but you're not, you're, you're coming at it from a much uh, clearer space. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Well, thank you everybody for coming to the conversation i'm just delighted that you took time from your day and and came to spend the this hour with with this conversation i very much appreciate it very very much and if if 
the conversation will be on the podcast and also on YouTube later, later in a few days. So um, you're always welcome to any of these conversations are on, on those, in those locations. So I, I hope this takes you back into the world with a little more curiosity and a little less judgment about anyone you come in contact with. And I promise you, it'll be a smoother ride. Thank you for listening to today's conversation on separate realities. If you found this information to be helpful or you know someone that would benefit from this information, please share. I also invite you to take a moment to subscribe so you can receive information on all upcoming webinars.